Whether or not they make the play-in, it's pretty insane to think the OKC Thunder, without 2022 second overall pick Chet Holmgren, are just two games under 500. While they're only competing for a play-in spot, what's transpired in 2022-23's campaign evidently displays that the future has a lot in store for this franchise. Merely seven years ago at this time, this was a Thunder team that owned a 3-1 series lead in 2016's Western Conference Finals, on the verge of getting back to the finals for the first time since 2012. The way Sam Presti's rebuilt this squad in the post-Durant and Westbrook era has truly been monumental, but all anyone cares about is whether or not this current group of young up-and-comers have what it takes to ultimately develop into championship caliber, similarly to the likes of the previous generation of Thunder prospects. You can't forget it's an OKC franchise that, in addition to Durant and Westbrook, have drafted James Harden, Serge Ibaka, Eric Bledsoe, Reggie Jackson, Cameron Payne, Steven Adams, Brandon Clark, and of course the current studs gracing Thunder threads in Canadian Shea Gilgis Alexander and Australian Josh Giddy, two players who are having breakout years. Most noteworthy is the fact that all in just last year's draft alone, they added the aforementioned Holmgren, Usman Zhang, and two guys named Jalen Williams. One of those two Jalens known as J-Dub has made significant in-season development, morphing into a Rookie of the Year contender. With the ability to play both ends of the court at an elite level, and how he's produced at a historically efficient rate offensively without over-dribbling to stop the team's offensive flow, Jalen J-Dub Williams is the real deal. In the second half of the season, he's become the favorite, other than Orlando rookie Paolo Boncaro, to win the ROI trophy. So how does Jalen fit the mold of the guy who can finish OKC's business that their passionate, patiently awaiting fateful has been desperate to see get finished for over a decade now? Stay tuned. Evidently morphing into a different type of player within the confines of this 82-game grind, last week Jalen dropped a career-high 32 points. Not only was it his best game in the scoring department, but his 80% field goal percentage on 12 for 15 shooting from the field acted as his second most efficient game of the year, only behind a game back in October where he was given just six minutes and made both of his two shot attempts. Additionally, that 32 point outing against the NBA's 17th best defensive team in the Utah Jazz saw Williams rack up five rebounds, five dimes, two blocks, and two steals. This man, J-Dub, has seen his minutes throughout the 2022-23 season increase on a monthly basis to the point where in March, he's posting unbelievable numbers for a rookie in 34 minutes per game, averaging just under 23 points per game on a ridiculous 70% true shooting mark. Defensively, as the safety off the ball, even as Wood turns to translate his drive into a post-up, Jalen's planted himself just outside of the restricted area which lures Wood into the ill-advised kickout, which Williams was anticipating the whole time. Again, he's going to force a kickout pass with his positioning being in the vicinity despite two other defenders being there as well, and this time he uses his 7'2 reach to fly out for the fundamentally poised closeout. Well aware there's only 8 seconds left on the shot clock, instead of a stunt as he displayed on the two possessions you just saw, this blitz rightfully surprises Wood, who finds Kleba for the brick. Here's what happens when you try to attack him downhill in transition, as key in on this KG initial backpedaling, as he looks almost slow-footed as Jaden Hardy first attacks downhill, then while going forearm to body fundamentally, he quickly shuffles back, cuts off the right side, and springs up for the chase down. This play sees him display more ambiguous positioning. This stance entails that J-Dub's just body pressuring Kleba and is content to give up a lane for the inbound, so instead of moving closer to the inbound, Kleba assumes he can spring off J-Dub and drift out further to receive the pass. 90% of defenders here would either hesitate, then rotate too late and get beat, or just allow the inbound to happen. J-Dub though, fearlessly blitzes the passing lane, however, and takes it coast to coast. Christian Woods seemed bothered by J-Dub's help defense all game, as remember, he blitzed on the last post up from him and helped off him a possession before that. 
unpredictability which leads to another hard stunt instead of a full-on double team right here, which forces the errant kick out to Hardaway Jr., who thinks he's open, but the overwhelming wingspan of Jalen says otherwise, it's another solid closeout for the brick. So, amidst a season which has seen him most notably progress on the offensive end and get a ton of attention from NBA YouTube, by the way, whether that's with his getting tighter and tighter handle off the bounce, which leads him to seamlessly create open looks, either attacking the cup with patented forceful athleticism after gaining hefty momentum, or smoothly let it fly on the move from the perimeter with his jumper, I think on the other side of the court, the help defense which we just keyed in on, has gone extremely overlooked in terms of the value that this kid brings to the table overall. Most recently against San Antonio, OKC's three active 2022 draft picks in J-Dub, J-Will, and Usman Zhang outscored the Spurs by a combined plus 25. The three also combined to post 46 points, 19 boards, 12 dimes, and 4 steals. The wiry 6'9", 185 pound Frenchman Usman Zhang's been up and down from the G League, but given the opportunity against the Spurs on Sunday, he tallied a career high in both points and rebounds with 17 and 8. Zhang's going to be a very productive two-way combo forward. More notably though in terms of this past Sunday, the other Jalen Williams, known as Jay Will, would individually force San Antonio into 7 turnovers. He racked up all four of those combined steals. Jalen may be the lesser known Jalen Williams of the bunch, but he's also built up a defensive reputation like his other Jalen. Jay Will is shockingly leading the entire NBA in charges drawn this season. So not only is Jalen a glue guy with his ability to easily get along with others in the locker room, but he evidently lays everything on the line for his mates. One of those mates being a man drafted a year before him in Josh Giddy, whose recent picking apart of the Golden State Warriors defense was nothing short of miraculous. Giddy's handle for his size allows him to see over the top of any defense and get past his matchup without utilizing a hefty amount of combinations or even a dribble combination at all. He's surprisingly quick off the bounce as well, as when you mix that in with his bread and butter, his awareness of the nine other players around him at any given time and how to read and react, aka his IQ, that's gifted us fans with one of the best rising facilitators in basketball. Man of the Hour J-Dub just tweeted out that quote, he's just sitting here thinking about the off the backboard bomb at Josh Giddy threw me today, lol. Giddy would respond to that by tweeting, I can throw more than just lob passes, and Giddy definitely isn't a liar based off the fact that he dropped 17 dimes to go along with his 17 points in that aforementioned win against Golden State last week. Scariest part about OKC's future for opponents out of everything, in my opinion, is that all of these developing weapons we've talked about are just at the disposal of a beastly 31 point per game score in Shea Gilgis Alexander, whose slicing and dicings led him to be one of the clutchest scorers across all of basketball. It's also led Shea to lead the league in free throws attempted per game, as my fellow Toronto-born kids become a masterfully crafty offensive manipulator, if you will. But given Shea himself was born just a month before yours truly in July of 1998, and is just 24 years of age like myself, the fact that he's top 10 among all players in total clutch points, just ahead of Bradley Beal and Trey Young, speaks to Alexander's evolving nature to fully embrace the spotlight. What is the scariest part of OKC's future for opponents, in your opinion? Best answer down below in the comments gets next video shout out. Today's shout out goes to Boston Haltane, who says, without LeBron in the lineup, the Lakers will go as far as AD can take them. In an extremely competitive Western Conference, I can actually see the Lakers push for the sixth seed. Currently, the Lakers are one game behind the sixth seed, and two behind the Clippers, who currently own the five seed. They're on a three game win streak, and if AD can play at a near MVP level for the rest of this season, and his supporting cast can continue to have big games and play well within their roles, then the Lakers have a chance at getting out of the play in tournament. With that being said, 
it's going to be a struggle as they currently sit as the ninth seed with three teams separating them from the sixth seed. The West is a close battle this year, but AD and the depth they have may just push the Lakers firmly into the number six seed and out of the play-in. The story is yours in Community Speaks, so leave your take on today's question 